to. The Honourable Enoch King. Mr Speaker, Labor supports the Smoke Free Environments Tobacco Plain Packaging Amendment Bill. And we, we support it with enthusiasm. Can I tell the members that uh, there are a few here who actually sat on the Select Committee to hear the submissions on this bill. I think my, my colleague Kevin Haig was there. I think Barbara was there. I'm not sure uh, whether there are any national members left uh, in the House who actually heard the submissions. But this, the government made a decision to have this bill on the 18th of February 2003. Then the bill was actually referred to our committee on the 11th of February 2014. And so the first point I want to make is the, that from, the, from February to August 2014, the Select Committee dealt with this bill. We travelled around New Zealand to hear the submissions. We had, um, uh, we had considered 15, received and considered 15,682 submissions from interested groups and individuals. Um, a number of them were form submissions and they, um, they did replicate the content. We heard oral evidence from 32 submitters in Auckland and Wellington. And I have to say, they were overwhelmingly in favour of this bill. Practically the only ones who were opposed to it were the tobacco companies that flew in from around the world to make their submissions to the committee for 15 minutes because that's, they got the same as everybody else. So for thousands of dollars, for something they said wouldn't work, they were prepared to come and make a submission. I, 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 I would say good on them if they wanted to make a submission, but it really did convince me that this was obviously going to be an effective measure, because if it wasn't, they wouldn't have bothered even making a submission. So my criticism of the government is not the bill. The bill in the form that has now been presented to this House by the work that the Select Committee did, and I'm pleased the Minister said that they've accepted all the amendments, is a good bill, including the name change. But what I will be critical of is the time that it has taken to get this bill here. We're talking almost two years, two years waiting to pass a piece of legislation that tightens the screws on tobacco control in New Zealand. And why did we wait two years? We waited because the government refused to be leaders in the fight against tobacco control with this measure. They wanted to wait to see what happened in Australia, because Australia had the guts to put in place plain packaging. They put in place, they said, we are an independent sovereign nation. We will make our own decisions about what we have in public health law. And they went ahead, they passed their legislation, they brought in plain packaging, and they were sued by the tobacco companies. So rather than us say, we are a sovereign nation, we are prepared to stand up for New Zealanders and pass our legislation, we sat there wringing our hands and saying, we need to wait and see. I was really disappointed because you know what, Mr Speaker? New Zealand has been a leader in tobacco control for decades. The first real legislation passed in this parliament was by the Right Honourable Helen Clark. The Right Honourable Helen Clark, for Simon O'Connor, who doesn't seem to remember her. She was the Minister of Health, and she brought in legislation banning smoking and workplaces. Once upon a time, gliding on, you could sit in your office and puff away as much as you liked, or in your factory, or wherever you worked. That was the first legislation. And then over the years, legislation, regulation, education has been implemented in this, in this country. I want to say that the Framework Convention on Tobacco Control, which is our international agreement, was negotiated and passed when I was Minister of Health and ratified under a Labour government. And we committed ourselves to the principles of the Framework Convention on Tobacco Control. One of them is plain packaging. There's still more that needs to be done. But that's where we were the leaders. 
We were out there, we were there with the Australians and some of the Scandinavian countries arguing at the World Health Assembly and arguing against big tobacco companies. But I do think maybe the problem that the National Party have had, apart from not showing the bottle to be able to bring this legislation in, in, uh, in our time frame, New Zealand's time frame, is the fact that they have had two tobacco lobbyists in their caucus. And I raise this issue because Philip Morris' spokesperson was Chris Bishop, and it's inter you need to hear what he said about this bill. He said that there are not any studies that suggest plain packaging will work at stopping people from taking up smoking or helping them to quit smoking. There's not one study to suggest that. He went, then went on to say this, we're worried about the retailers. We're worried about the impact. We're worried about the retailers. This is Chris Bishop. We're worried about the retailers. We are worried about the uh, impact of plain packaging on intellectual property treaties uh, that we are subject to. This was a member, and this is a member, of the National Party caucus with these views. No wonder they have dragged the chain when it came to implementing this legislation. But you see, research that was cited to us from the New Zealand Medical Journal states that New Zealand studies show plain packets that feature large graphic health warnings are significantly more likely to promote cessation amongst young adult smokers than fully or partially branded tobacco um, packs. See, I'm more inclined to remember to to uh, to believe the World Health Organisation, the, uh, the Medical Association, the Public Health Association, our, the experts who have devoted their life in reducing the consumption and the prevalence of tobacco in New Zealand. I'm more inclined to believe them than the words of a, a backbench um, former tobacco lobbyist. So what do we have in this bill that is now before us? And I do hope we're not going to drag the chain and have the second reading and then we're going to wait for the end of the year to have the committee stages and maybe eventually we will pass it. If this isn't the process now, I say to the Minister, get this bill through. Get this bill through. Stop mucking about as we have done to date. You see, this bill does, I think, three or four very important things. First of all, the principal objective is to reduce the appeal of tobacco products and smoking, particularly to young people. And I have to say, Minister, I have seen some of the pictures that are going to be on the so-called plain packaging. Not plain at all. That's a real misnomer, Mr. Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And they are graphic. If they don't put you off smoking, they ought to put you off smoking. So that was the first objective. The second one is to reduce the wider social acceptance and approval of smoking and tobacco products. We must do that if we're going to be smoke-free 2025. The government say they've signed up to that. Don't believe we will make it under the progress that's been made by this government. And, Minister, there is much more, so much more. And, and to have a place in history if the Minister just took hold of this portfolio and really moved it along. The third, the third one is to increase the noticeability and the effectiveness of mandated health warnings and messages and images. And the fourth is to reduce the likelihood of, of consumers acquiring false per perceptions of the harm caused by tobacco products. And of course, some of us come from the era when smoking was very, very um, acceptable. Where, where you, you as a young person put your cigarette in a cigarette holder and thought you looked cool. You had, you had the false perception of tobacco. And so over time, we have got rid of that perception and this bill helps it. You've got a packet of tobacco, cigarettes. You're going to have some... Not, no, not speaking to you, Mr Speaker. Those who have a packet of cigarettes and your pipe... <laughs> I'm looking to have labels on pipes as well. Um, but, Mr Speaker, there will be no doubt that if people are, are buying tobacco uh, cigarettes, the package will show the damage and the harm that can be done to them. 
There's much more that can be said, Mr. Mr. Speaker. But I do want to say we, had, we recommended a change to the name, and the Minister said that he has accepted the chain, change. It is to tobacco standardised packaging. And, and I remember that... that um, this is quite an important point, Mr Speaker. I could just finish it if you gave me a minute. I will give you ten seconds. Ten se <laughs> so, so Geoffrey Palmer said when he was at the Law Commission, bills should accurately reflect what they are meant to do. And this change of name does that. And thank you, Mr Speaker. I call Simon, Simon O'Connor.